If you are like my subscriber and friend Tim, who is a natural introvert, going into a room full of people may be difficult for you. Today I'm going to answer Tim's question of how to get over the anxiety while also making a good physical and verbal first impression. And I will also respond to Scott's question who asked, do introverts have a better first impression than extroverts? You see, lots to discuss about introverts and extroverts and the first impression they make on others. Hi, I'm Sylvie Giusto. I'm a keynote speaker and author, and one of the best parts of my work is being able to connect with professionals like yourself and answer your questions. So like Tim and Scott, if you have any unanswered questions, stick around until the end to find out how you can submit your questions. And in the meantime, be sure to subscribe to my channel and please hit the tiny bell for notifications. And no matter where you found me, let's keep in touch, please. So let's get started. Do you ever find yourself wishing you would be a little bit more introverted or just a tiny bit more extroverted? I know, the grass is always greener on the other side, isn't it? That's why first and foremost, I want you to know two important things. First, there is no better or worse. I know it's easy to think, I would make a better first impression if I was more outgoing. Or even the opposite, I would make a better first impression if I was quieter. We often want what we don't have. And in reality, there is no better or worse when it comes to being yourself. Second, a cookie cutter approach doesn't work here. It rarely works. You cannot categorize humans into just those two groups, introverts and extroverts. Because in reality, most of us exhibit qualities of both and fall somewhere between the two. Take myself as an example. As a professional speaker, I enjoy being on stage in front of thousands of audience members. I'm loving the spotlight and handle meet and greets like a pro. Certain strengths on my profile make this possible. And people certainly perceive someone with these traits as an extrovert. The reality? Once the spotlight is gone, many of us stage people turn all the way to the other side of the scale feel exhausted from the crowd and need quiet time to relax, recover and refocus. So instead of looking what is better or worse or what you are not, it's important to figure out what you are and where you are on the scale depending on the occasion you face. There are a variety of personality tests that could help you with that, including the assessment I have developed and I will link all of them for you below. With your own awareness comes the understanding of what messages you send in those first micro moments when walking into a room. And if you feel that you are more on the introvert side of the scale in these situations, just like Tim, here are five helpful tips for you. First, one way to boost confidence and reduce anxiety is engaging with new connections from screen to screen before you have a face-to-face -face encounter. This could be through social media or through email. Some of us are just a little bit braver behind the screen than we are in person. It can break down the initial barrier and make it easier to communicate once you are in this situation in person. This also works well before events or conferences, for example. If you can find out who is going to be attending, maybe you connect with them on LinkedIn and send them a message to introduce yourself or send a friendly email communicating that you are looking forward to meeting them. This helps you to possibly pick out a few interesting people where you are certain you have something in common you can talk about once you meet them. It also comes with the pleasant side effect that they may reach out to you and start a conversation once they recognize your face in the room. Fair warning though. Make sure that your digital footprint works well for you for this. Think about what your social media profiles say about you and how that may impact the interactions you have with people in person who came across you on the internet. Second, pick your targets. 
you don't need to connect with everybody in the room. Instead, be strategic and make a plan about who exactly you want to meet during your time at the event or conference. This allows you to give energy where it is most useful for you and leave you feeling less drained by the end of each interaction. Third, have an internal script of what you want to talk about and how you want to open conversations. No, I'm not just talking about your name and your title and your workplace and your company. I'm talking about who you are and what you stand for. Your strengths, your superpowers. You need to share with others. Because quite often we think it's their job to find out how amazing we are. The reality though is, you need to be able to brag about yourself. If only this idea already makes you feel uncomfortable, I will share a link to a masterclass where you can learn how to toot your horn in the most humble and professional way. Next, try to train and control the verbal and non-verbal signals you send best possible. Train your eyes to make eye contact. Train your body to stand confidently, yet also welcoming by, for example, avoiding any crossing of your arms or slouched over posture. Train your voice to come off strong and confident going into each of those encounters. That being said, number five, trick your brain. An exercise I like to use in my conferences is for everybody to think of one word they would like to be known for. When you are approaching a group of people, you can continue reminding yourself of that one word. That, for example, you are strong, 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 strong. This will interrupt any negative thought patterns you are having that force you to retract and become nervous. I talk more in depth about this exact exercise in a previous video, which I'm linking for you too. And for all of you introverts, and extroverts out there who feel as though they need more help harnessing their power as leaders and confident professionals, I will link a few books and I would encourage you to read my book, The Image of Leadership. You will not only learn how to make your best first impression, but how to maintain it and lead with compassion in the workplace. But that's not all. For those of you who subscribe and turn your post notifications on, you will be alerted of all the new videos that answer questions like Tim's and Scott's, so you can keep learning and growing. If instead you want to be asking the questions, join my list below and contact me directly. There are so many free resources waiting for you and by joining my list you will be the first to know about all the new launches and videos. Feel free to share this video with all of your introverted and extroverted friends and I will see you in the next video.